Hey, what's up guys? Again, sorry for the wait. I ran out of excuses, so let's just move on to the video. In my last two videos, I introduced the speed booster and the FT50 1.2 setup and went in depth to discuss the technical aspects of it. I didn't expect it, but a bunch of you love the setup and personally messaged me to let me know that they've actually bought the setup for themselves. But there's a portion of viewers that were skeptical about the image quality and sharpness of the setup. And it's a healthy kind of skepticism because when things are too good to be true, it probably is. However, in terms of sharpness, it really isn't disappointing at all. So in this video, I'll give you guys a better idea of what kind of results to expect from the setup. Okay, here's a setup. Sony Alpha 6300, Joey Optics Lens Turbo 2 Speed Booster, and of course, the FD51.2. I didn't get the L version because it doesn't make sense to pay twice as much for basically the same thing. I know the L is better, but it's not worth it for me. Since these lenses are decades old, keep in mind that the image quality will be affected by the condition of the lenses. So watch out for scratches or dust and buildup inside the lens. Okay, let's take a look at the one that was shipped to me from Japan. I'm pretty happy to say that the one I got is kept in very good shape. Focusing ring is nice and smooth, aperture ring is clicky as well. And I just need to say this is really well built, as most legacy lenses are. It feels solid and has a good weight to it. To keep it true with you guys, all of the following clips are straight from the camera, shot on S-Log2. I only applied minor adjustments such as stabilization and post, so it won't look that pretty. For those of you who don't know what S-Log is, it's basically a really flat color profile that's good for post-production. And since some of you are skeptical of the sharpness from the setup shot wide open, I shot every single clip with the lens wide open at f1.2 or f0.9 depending on how you look at it. I covered everything about that in my previous video. Go check it out if you're curious what I'm talking about. This clip was shot on a winter night at around 10 p.m. The light that was lighting up the scene was the moon. Yeah, you heard that right, the moon. Yeah, it was one of those brighter nights, but it's still pretty crazy how good it looks straight out of the camera. I did a little test to show you how well the setup actually performs. In this video, I tried to match roughly what I saw with my naked eye, then compare it to what it could do without too much noise. No, it's not very scientific, but here it is. I don't want to mislead you guys to think that if you get the speed booster, you get awesome low light performance like this. The optics is one thing, but the A6300 is also doing a lot of the work. What I can promise is creamy blurry bokeh. Now I'll just run through the f-stops to let you judge the sharpness. It's not as sharp as some other lenses wide open, but let's be real, not many lenses are that sharp at such low f number. Okay, but I shoot professional work and require lenses that are real sharp. <laughs> These stock images are killing me. Obviously, if you're gonna shoot wall posters or something, it might not be sharp enough for that. But if you're doing that kind of work, you'd have a really good reason to invest in something more capable and more expensive. I say for 95% of us, this setup is definitely sharp enough to shoot wide open, as I do all the time. One of the greatest things about using a full frame legacy setup is that you kind of get two lenses in one package if you have a crop sensor. See, if you swap the speed booster with a simple adapter, the setup goes from being roughly 55mm full frame equivalent to a 75mm full frame equivalent. And that gets me very close to the standard focal length for portraits, which is 85mm. Again, if you're new to this, I encourage you to take a look at my previous videos and dig deeper on speed boosters, if you're interested. I hope this was helpful for you. If you want to see some photos I took with the setup, go check out my Instagram at jimmy.kai. Also, I just got my hands on the 7 Artisans 50mm f1.1. I've been playing around with the lens for the past few weeks, and I'm starting to think it could potentially replace my FD51.2 in some cases. It is a faster lens with more glass after all, so if you're curious about that, follow me here and on Instagram for my upcoming videos. Peace!